Attention to all home brewers. I got some very exciting news for you all. I have spent many hours working on a new version of my brewing recipe template. It was some major enhancements and some minor ones which will appeal to everyone, but specifically to my international audience. So if you want to see what those are, keep watching. For starters, I have listened to all your comments about uh, enhancement requests and, and, and your feedback in general about my spreadsheet over the past couple of years. And I have it all up here and I've been waiting for a chance to get around to doing it because uh, it was going to be a, a very time consuming project to revamp this thing for some of these enhancements requests. But the biggest one of all was now my spreadsheet support metric units. Now this is really important for close to half of my subscribers. Um, just over a little over half of my subscribers are actually from the U.S. where I'm at. The uh, other sm uh, smaller minority, but almost a equal share, are from the international countries as far away. Well, as New Zealand and Australia, Norway, Sweden, Canada, Brazil, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can go on and on. I have a pretty long list, but uh, it's it's pretty interesting. I didn't know uh, this homebrewing. Uh, channel of mine was going to be uh, adopted uh, so well outside my own uh, country here. So uh, the first draft I had a while back was basically centered around my own personal use using U.S. customary uh, units of measure and uh, I, w I finally got around to implementing and incorporating the metric system in here. So, walk so I'm going to walk through that a little bit. And, as, and, and while I did this, I actually took advantage of uh, my time of rebuilding this spreadsheet from scratch in, in a lot of ways to add some new features, which I think appeal to everybody. Uh, things such as pull-down menus, auto-entry fields, uh, additional information on the screen um, in terms of things like um, uh, calculated and actual uh, IBUs, ABVs, uh, attenuation, some other little little bits of information which, which are useful uh, when, it, when it comes around to analyzing what went right and what went wrong with your actual brew day compared to what you uh, expected. Some useful information. Uh, so I want to do a deep dive here, walk you through it on screen, and uh, let's, let's go. Now let's get started. This first tab you're seeing here is the new one I've added um, just for informational purposes. It's just an instructions tab for those who are new to the spreadsheet and not quite sure how to get started in it as well as a version history down below where I uh, have added or will be adding changes going forward for every change I make, I hope. Uh, not just for your sake, but also for mine, is I cannot remember hardly anything I've done of the many changes over the past uh, two to three years I've been using the spreadsheet here. So I think going forward, I'm gonna to try to track this a bit better with uh, dates and version numbers and some, and some information here for, for both you and I. This is the recipe sheet, which you can print out on brew day or use dynamically within Excel, um, whichever your preference is. I made some changes here, some of them cosmetic, some of them pretty substantial. The very top in the upper left here, I wanted to have some, some sort of a common naming convention for these beer styles, uh, just for posterity's sake when, we, uh, when I make these. And I decided to use the BC, uh, the BJCP uh, style guidelines. So. What you can see here is a category and a style, which is a subcategory, basically, of category. And uh, so you start off by picking the, the top row. And you see here, it says choose beer category. I've converted a lot of these yellow input fields into pull-down menus. So you can see here, I can select from a predefined list of these categories, which already exist. So I'll pick Pale Commonwealth Beer, for example. And these are dynamic uh, cascading menus so now the style menu automatically filters to just the styles under that category right so I'll do an English IPA here for example I moved the brewer and, and brew date over to the center that's just cosmetic I added a little blurb about please feed me uh, just because of the work involved in, in updating the spreadsheet and maintaining it all the time is becoming more and more of a time consuming task and it's nice to ask for a little help once in a while but I'll, I'll move on here 
I've uh, took the grain bill, uh, uh, tweaked it a tiny bit. I've taken the hops bill, um, and I've added a column for AAU, which are alpha acid units, which is uh, one way to calculate bitterness. And uh, this is flexible because uh, before, without this here, you would have the alpha percentages times the uh, quantity, and that gives you the AAUs. Now you can actually work backwards a little bit. If, you, uh, if that's how you work, you can have your AAUs to start with, and then figure out how much of a quantity of a certain type of acid hops that you need to uh, achieve that. It's uh, added there for flexibility. I've also, let's see, I've, I've also, because I've added support for metric units, which I'll cover in just a bit, um, these quantities, these fields change. So pounds here will change to kilograms, ounces here will change to grams, which is nice for you who want that, right? I scroll down to the lower part of the spreadsheet on the left side. My mash variables are basically the same. I removed a couple rows in here, which I thought were just adding confusion, and I and apparently did from some comments and some feedback I received. So I went ahead and removed those. These units here, again, will change. I'll show you again, like I said, later as to how to change these. And you have your actual yellow entry fields uh, for your actual um, inputs or your actual recorded values on, on brew day. Okay. Now on the right side here, I've added a completely separate block for the yeast strain. I did this because I wanted to have an auto population or an auto populate functionality here, where again, you can see in the yellow uh, field here where it says American Ale 1056. Again, this is a pull down showing all the available yeast strains out there today, right? So I could pick on Bavarian wheat 3638, uh, and you didn't see this, but it changes the uh, brand. It, well, it didn't change it. That was actually the same maker. It was a bad, bad choice. If I pick a different one, there we go. Or maybe this one here. I can go through this all day. And uh, you'll see that the brand changes the uh, apparent attenuation. Now, this is listed as zero, which means I don't have an entry for it, which means it's not listed anywhere that I can find. But that's also a bad example for this video. But it also gives you the, the optimal fermentation range just for your information there. And I kind of like this because uh, then I can come back up to American Ale yeast again. Uh, maybe I'll pick American Ale yeast number two. It changes everything here. And then and you may have noticed some changing down here. I'll cover that right now. But uh, the this value of the attenuation actually affects some of the values down here, which is why I wanted to have it as a self-populating field. And of course, I added a few more rows for other ingredients. I think I had a one or two rows less before. I added a few more for those of you who had a lot of additional ingredients to your beer. And I moved the notes column from the one long row at the bottom off to the left side in more of a box. I wanted to make room for what you see here on the lower right, which uh, I think I, I, I've expanded, and this is actually kind of nice now. Um, I had some of this inf information before scattered uh, around the spreadsheet in sort of a haphazard uh, fashion. I wanted to get it more organized. So what I have here in this section here is are my uh, boil volumes, pre-boil, post-boil, and batch volumes, along with the boil times, and of course your recordings to fill in the entries there. The units, of course, will change. Uh, I'll show you that again. Um, in, in the near future here. And also I added and consolidated some of these uh, in informational fields. So for example, the efficiency that you uh, designed the recipe around, you'll get an actual uh, efficiency right next to it. The IBUs I had on here before as calculated or expected from the recipe, but I never actually showed what they actually were uh, when, when, when it was all done on brew day. Also the ABV, um, I had the actual ABV on my, on my former, but I didn't have the expected. Now it'll predict an, an alcohol by volume number for you, even before you brew, and then you can com compare them. And the same thing here, I also added an apparent attenuation, what's expected, and this value comes from the value that's up here for the yeast, and then it'll calculate what the actual apparent attenuation was for you for comparison purposes as well. So if you want to do a post-mortem, on your beers and you'll have the information here to kind of lead you to maybe start investigating what may have gone wrong or may have gone right all right and at the very bottom here i, I organized the uh specific gravity fields so again we still have the predicted pre-boil volume uh pre-boil specific gravity as, as well as the original gravity and the final gravity fields and your manual entries for those, which you enter these in, these, these values will update, everything will all work together. We can walk through an example at the very end. 
And I also added a field for uh, a refractometer, which I have bought recently and I've been using for the past few brews alongside my hydrometer. And I'm just getting used to how it works. So it's sort of a parallel measurement. I record my, refractor, re, re, my refractometer values and bricks values, and they get automatically converted to specific gravity to compare them to the ones I entered in over here and, of course, to my expected ones. So I kind of have a lot of all this information all in one chart. It makes it a lot easier to figure out what, what's going wrong, where your value is way off, close, whatever, right? And so that is, uh, that's it for a quick review of this. We, we can come back to this recipe sheet at the end of the of walking through the other tabs as we enter in values, these values will automatically populate. So uh, notice they're all blank now, but these will all be populated at the end of the video. All right. Let's talk about the brew house setup and calcs page. Now, the uh, first thing I want to just show you right off the bat is that I consolidated uh, what was the mash calcs tab, which was separate. I put them all together in one brew house setup tab. It didn't make sense to have two different tabs because kind of your mash, mash calcs are in a lot of ways related to your brew house setup. So I put them all on, on uh, all, here all, all in one tab. So now at the very top here, now th this is the biggest enhancement I think I've done to this uh, spreadsheet and took the most time to do. So I hope you appreciate it because uh, honestly, quite frankly, I don't use metric at all. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, so if you find problems with the metric uh, behavior, look, just let me know, you know, comment or Send me a message. I will uh, I'll look into it. Okay, but uh, I have I, I don't brew metrics, so I don't know. Uh, I've done some testing and some verification of some old recipes I had. I plugged numbers in between the U.S. customary units and the metric units, and uh, it it looks good to me so far. So if you find a problem, let me know. So, but going back to the spreadsheet here, as you can see, I can choose between metric and customary. So by default, it's on U.S. customary. It'll and it'll give you the units here of what's going to be used throughout the whole spreadsheet. If I go up here and pick on metric, you may have noticed not just these change, but all the actual units in place down the tab. And this isn't just in this tab. If I go back to my recipe sheet, you'll see that these have changed too. Here and down here and probably up here, grams and kilograms. So that was uh, a nice feature I was able to throw in there. For you folks who uh, use metric, I hope you guys uh, can use it uh, to your advantage. So going back to the brew house setup at Calx here, it's uh, it's this is largely the same as it was before. If you are familiar with it, for those who aren't, here's where you enter in your brew equipment in terms of the capacities of your mash tons, your brew kettles, your maximum fill capacity, so you don't overflow your your um, your, your vessels. I have a little thing I added here. Uh, will the kettle hold all the wort? And that's driven by this value here. If I set it to a lower threshold, it'll tell me it fails, which means the uh, wort is going to overflow the pot, which is not a good idea. So I go ahead and set it to a more reasonable value, about roughly nine tenths full as the max capacity. And also these fields down here, uh, these dead space values will, de will be dependent upon your specific equipment also, and you will probably need to estimate initially or measure or calculate in some way the exact values. These values here are shown for what I have guesstimated to be correct for my setup. And, and these are important because these values and others here uh, determine what your pre-boil pre volume must be in order to get your post-boil volume for your fermenter, okay? So make sure you look over these values carefully. Uh, don't just assume what I have here is correct. I, 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 I see these with values for myself, for one, because I use these values every day, but two, it kind of gives you an example of some entries to uh, maybe give you um, some food for thought as to what it is I'm talking about when, when I talk about um, some of these th things in here, like uh, extract efficiency, for example. It's, that's something that I've measured before. Um, through many years of brewing, it's about roughly my average uh, mash extract efficiency. Yours may be higher, yours may be lower. Something for you to keep in mind, okay? And some more valuable uh, values. Now see, uh, the temperature change from Fahrenheit to Celsius, but all my values are still in my old units. Switching the units, now something to, for you all to know, sw switching the units back and forth does not change the entries in the yellow fields at all. Those are your 
manual entry fields. You need to go back and put the right values for the type of units that are shown next to those fields. Just to let you know, don't assume that's gonna auto convert for you because I did not design it to do that. Okay, now down at the bottom here are your are some more mash calcs. Uh, again, this is from the old mash calcs tab, which has been brought back in here. Things like your ambient grain temperature. Again, this was entered in in Fahrenheit, but the units in Celsius, I'll have to uh, enter in the value in Celsius. And the same thing for the water to grist ratio. I try to put some examples in here for those who are using the, the metric system um, to give you some starting points to start from. But uh, again, I don't use metric. If these are not typical, let me know. I can enter in some more appropriate values for the future for those who are just downloading the spreadsheet for the first time later. And also in the overflow check again. So if my mash ton over um, is is not uh, is unable to hold all the grains in in the water, it'll it'll fail here as well to let me know that uh, I need to change some value either my water water to grist ratio or the amount of water I add to, or Maybe I need a bigger mash ton. That's a possibility too, right? Okay. And then now towards the bottom here, we have a little bit more information here for informational reasons only. And, and, a, and a lot of this is mapped onto the recipe sheet here, right? So for example, uh, this is telling me for whatever volume settings and entries I have, I need the two batch sparging steps and I need to add um, some liquid for the first step. Uh, drain it, add some liquid for the second step and drain it, and a possible third step. But this is not new. This is what was up there before, okay? On to the grain and sugar calcs tab. This used to be called, I think, the grain and adjuncts uh, tab. But truth be told, adjuncts are kind of grains, right, usually. And uh, I used to have this specify as uh, grain versus extract. Truth is also extracts is also sugar. So. I simplify this greatly, and the terms for green and sugar are, are the only ones used in the spreadsheet. But as you can see here, you, you can come back up here, and in these yellow fields, again, there's, there's going to be pull downs for a list of all the grains and sugars that are available. So you can see that there's malt, there's sugar entries in here, and let's see, I put some brown, some brown malt in there, and I can enter my value. Now you see here it says kilograms because I changed on the brew house tab my units to metric. If I change it to, if I go back briefly really quick here just to show you how easy this changes, if I change back to US customary and go back to the grain and sugar tab, it's pounds. See, just like that. Switch that back, go back to grain and sugars tab, and I can enter, I don't know, what's a typical kilogram value? Five. I'm not sure again, I don't do metric, but I entered that in here and I'll get my, uh, my percent of the grain bill that was there before. The type of uh, the type of uh, grain, is it a grain or sugar? That will show up here and affect these calcs down here. So let me enter in naturally just for comparison's sake some Belgian candy sugar and put a pound of that in there, right? Then I have uh, then I have my grain bulk percentages. It says type of sugar, contributions from grain, contributions from sugar. Now these are all, you, you as the end user of this do not need to worry about hardly any of this stuff in blue. Basically, these are all step calculations that feed off each other to sum up to some values down here, which are then copied to the to the recipe sheet down below here. Don't don't worry too much about this. This is just there um, for calculation purposes only. But what it'll give you is is pretty much your your uh, your actual pre boil points they call them and how they add up and what your um, what your mash. Uh, specific gravity contribution was versus what's, what's it, just what the uh, sugars or, or extracts con converted or contributed. And of course the total, which would be your pre-boil total specific gravity and your post-boil specific gravity here, which are then copied again to the recipe sheet. Going to the hops calcs tab. This is pretty similar to what we had before with the uh, enhancement of some more pull downs here, okay? and some unit changes. So again, this quantity of grams here will change back to ounces depending on the setting of uh, units that you've chosen earlier. And also added this AAU column that I mentioned briefly in the recipe sheet for those who like to see that. And also, so here I can go back now, I, my a more recent update to my video, I've, I've, I, begin add, I began to add uh, presets for times because I, I don't like typing, I just like to pick things, right? Pick a 60 minute boil, Type uh, is, is another pull down that, that I think that was there before too. So I'll pick on leaf or pellet, right? Now what I've done here now is I know this is new. I've actually added 
a pull down showing all the hops that I think are out there right now. So rather than typing everything in, use color appearance and say I want some Vanguard hops. And let's say I know what the alpha acids are. I don't know if it's 8.1%. 8, 8 I, I actually don't know. You know. Each package is different. And the amount of grams, which I assume is around for an ounce, it's probably a little over 28 grams, 28.3, I think, or roughly somewhere in that area. And it calculates the, the alpha acid units, uh, the, uh, the utilization adjustment factors based upon whether that you're using leaf hops, pellet hops, plug hops, or first word hopping. It factors that in and gives you your IBUs down here below, totals them all up, and that gets copied to the recipe sheet way over here again. If I scroll down to the recipe sheet, you'll see there's IBUs, so there, there's that value right there. And then later on, as you add more information here, it'll actually tell you what your actual IBUs should be on brew day. And, and, and that could be different because your uh, your actual final or starting and final brew volumes and, uh, and uh, your specific gravities could have been different than what was estimated and predicted with this number here, okay? So, so that's why I added that there just for comparison purposes. But you, so then you can come down here and say, I wanna add some more here. I see you got some pellet hops now. And I'm gonna get a pull down here and pick some Amarillo hops. And I don't know what those are, 11, 12%. I'm, I'm not sure, right? Uh, grams, 28.3, or maybe I'll do more, whatever. But uh, it just, but then it adds it up in the in cases of the IBU just like that. So this was very similar to, to what I've done before, which is the addition of of, of the pull downs in the AAU uh, column. In the last portion of this spreadsheet, uh, there's a number of tabs here. One's called grain and sugar list, there's a hops list, a, uh, a yeast list over here, and a beer category and styles list. Now, all these lists are here to use to auto populate and see those pull down menus earlier in the other tabs, of which we walked through, okay? So if there's a uh, an, an, an entry, that you need to add or change, you can actually come into each of these tabs and rename them, change them uh, appropriately to your liking. You can even insert and add information. But to do all that, you first have to unlock each of these tabs um, on, by going to uh, review and unprotect sheet, okay? And the reason why uh, these sheets are protected, uh, and in fact, all of the tabs are protected, is sort of a self-protection um, method to keep you and I both from uh, erroneously erasing an important formula or making a, a change, an unintentional change to a field. Uh, it's just an extra level of protection because you don't want to have bad numbers on brew day and find out later that uh, something was not right, right? So anyway, but that's how you unprotect them. And uh, you can also use some of these auto filters here. So so let's say, well, I know I, I, I want to add a grain or let's say I just, I just want to add a sugar. You can get a short list of the sugars or you can just look at the grains, uh, for example, right? So that's a nice way to quickly auto filter and see what's here. Okay, and also some descriptions of some of these things. And all this information I got off the web, uh, usually one or two or more sources and compile them. There could be mistakes in here. If there are, let me know, I'll correct them. And I just showed you how to correct them yourself basically, but uh, don't just make the changes, uh, please. If you find something that's a problem that you may think will affect others, let me know. I'll make the changes on the spreadsheet and put it back online. Uh, also, the, the same thing in the hops list. Uh, it's a, a list of all the hops out there and some possible substitutions and flavor descriptions. The only uh, fields that are used to auto-populate is column A. The rest of the stuff is informational only. And again, you can unlock this, make changes, additions, whatever, okay? And then there is the yeast tab. And I, I actually like to look at this a lot because I like to explore yeast. And it's very similar. It's got the auto filter already configured. Uh, so let's say that there's only a, a handful of uh, yeast that I would use. Uh, for example, my local homebrew shop only stocks Y yeast. So uh, if I know I'm going to be shopping there, I might as well just go ahead and filter out just the Y yeast strains, right? Or, or, or if I was using uh, muttons, maybe. And let's see, and pick on this one. And then you have the couple muttons yeast in there. Okay, so that's just a good way to filter things out. It also lists some more, some more information on here. This column F is what's actually used on the recipe sheet tab um, to fill in the average attenuation. They have ranges here, right? But I can't really <clears throat> do that very well um, in, in Excel to accommodate the range. So I just put the average values in here. So back on the re recipe sheet, um, this, um, up here, this attenuation field, which is also then uh, re 
label down here uh, will change uh, per those columns on that on that tab. But these but th these are averages, the information I got here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And then also the final list is the beer category and style list, where all the BJCP entries are located. And as you can see, right, I can scroll from the left. Uh, see right there, based on BJCP 2015 beer style guidelines. I scroll all the way to the right, and there's 34, and they're all the different categories. So if these change over time, uh, I can try to update these, or you can play with them all you want to. You just have to unlock them just like the other tabs and make changes. Okay? Now let's go into a deeper dive here and walk through an actual example of putting together a recipe. Okay? So... I'm going back to my recipe sheet here, and uh, well, first of all, I need to know what kind of beer I'm going to make, right? Oh, let me think here. Let me let, let me do something simple. Uh, is it a pale American ale that I want to do? Let me see. Uh, yeah, I've I've done plenty of pale ales before. Or uh, what effect will this even do in a it's just a general American pale ale? Okay. And of course, I enter my date in here, which today would be the 14th of 2017. And uh, and that's pretty much it for now. Um, from uh, except for my yeast strain, since I'm here, I can come back and change this later. But I'm already here. Let's say I want to use my American uh, Ale 1056. Click on that. It fills in information here for me. At, for the time being, I can come back here and enter stuff in later. But right now, all I'm concerned about is getting the right amount of grains and sugars in proportion to the hops that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and go on. To the grain and sugar tab and now these are not what i want so i can come in here and back these out right and let's see for a good american pale ale uh generally start off with a basic pale malt brewers two row right and that could be uh many things i'm just gonna go put in nine pounds here for, for starters and and see what i get here um now you, you can just use pale uh, two row malt but a lot of, of american pale ales really benefit with a little bit of another malt like uh, let's say let's do a vienna malt maybe throw a pound of vienna malt in there okay and now you can see here it calculates the, the percentage of the uh, grain bill now depending on the style you're making you'll see uh, in a lot of online uh, or in, in, in brewing magazines they show you uh, or give you guidelines as to uh, you know what the maximum amount of grain you might want to put in a recipe so they say oh for for American pale ale you shouldn't put in more than 10% uh, of, a, of a Vienna malt uh, well okay then I know to put no more than a pound in generally speaking if I want to stay within those guidelines okay so that's useful for that that's why the percentages are, are listed here to help you kind of stay within those uh, that framework of the recipe that you're trying to work within and what, and, and so what so what it did here it tells me I'm going to use a total of uh, of 10 pounds of grain, 10 pounds, because that's my unit of measure here at the top. That could be kilograms, and it could be a different value, depending again on your settings. And it uh, does some math over here. It gives me some numbers from the total gravity point contribution to, and then what they work out to for both the pre-boil and the post-boil here. Now, some people like to add things like, uh, like a sugar in there. Me, I don't, but let's say that you wanted to add a little bit of dry malt extract. So you can actually use this to, to calculate extract recipes too, uh, as well as all grain or a extract with grains uh, recipe as well. I don't do extract uh, recipes anymore. I haven't done them in years, but that doesn't mean I can't go back to trying it now. But so let's just say I wanted to throw a little bit more sugar in there for a little extra alcoholic kick. Boom. And uh, it, it shows me how much of the uh, specific gravity is from the mash and how much is from the sugar additions. Now, because uh, for those who don't know this and who are new and trying to follow along here, this is uh, kind of a tutorial on the spreadsheet, but I want to throw some advice here as well on, on this as well. Um, just, just because you're putting the sugar in the grain bill doesn't mean the sugar goes in the mash tun. This sugar uh, should be dumped into the uh, brew pot after the mash is done. There's no point in putting it in the uh, mash, and therefore you can see the extract efficiency even is listed as, as 100% because it's effectively already been mashed dried and packaged uh, so just keep that in mind but actually i'm not going to use this i'm going to go ahead and get rid of this okay and so i have this here now so now i i need to balance all this sweet sugary malt uh with some bitterness in the hops so let's go on to the hops calcs tab where i didn't like these slushes i was just picking this up random before 
But let's say I'd like to do an American Pale Ale, and I want to do a 60-minute boil, so, uh, or it's actually a 75-minute boil for my recipes, but I start putting it in hops at 60 minutes. So I'll put in a hops. Let's say I can only find pellet hops, which are actually seem to be more and more common than, than, than whole leaf. And then I, the species for American, American Pale Ale, uh, well, as everyone knows, a Cascade's a good one. I actually am uh, more of a fan of Centennial nowadays. And the Centennials can vary in percentages, but I'll just put an 8% there as a rough number. And I usually buy stuff in whole ounce form. So I'll put an ounce in here, and then I'll get my AAU units, my, my, my IBU contribution for that uh, time and, and amount. And it tells me I got 20, almost 28 IBUs. Well, American Pellet Ale, you know, they, they're more better than that. They can be anywhere from, you know, 40 to 60 or upwards of 70 um, IBUs or more, depending on your interpretation of what a pale ale is. So, um, but I know I put my bittering additions in here. Well, I want some flavor, right? So I'll, I'll come in here and I'll come back down to, let's say the 15-minute uh, mark. I'll throw in some more pellets. And maybe I'll throw in Cascade this time, maybe a blend of the two. Cascade Argentina, Cascade US, I'll just pick this one here. Cascades are usually a much smaller uh, alpha acid. And let's say I'll put two hops in there, and that will give me that value there. And then I'll say I want to uh, have more of a aroma at the end. So down at the zero, zero minute mark, I'll throw in some whole leaf you know, or just some pellets. I'll, you know, I'll just change up, I'll put some leaf in there. I'll do some more ca cast. Let's see, I'll do a little bit of Centennial again, uh, whatever. I'm making this up as I go, folks. This is not something I've done before. I made this something similar, but not exactly. Centennial could be another 8%, and I put another ounce in there. Okay, so let's say that's what I'm going to start off with as I design my beer. And you can see down here, I got a good IBU of 33 and a half IBU. That's a pretty fair, I think, for a, for a pale ale. But what's nice about this, is that I can come in here and play with these numbers. Let's say that I wanted to, to have it uh, less bitter, and I could look at these contributions up here in column J and say, well, you know, I didn't want it to be 28 IBUs, so I can either do a few things here. I can reduce the quantity, see? Or if I left the quantity the same, I can reduce the time. And you can actually see, uh, before you brew anything, what the, uh, at least the theoretical impact will be of, uh, of changing not just the hops, which is the alpha acids and the quantities, but also the time. So you can actually sit here and play with the time and the, and the hops and their alpha acids and their quantities to get what you think is what you want for a, a um, sort of a balance of bitterness, flavor, and aroma. Okay, so let's just pretend this is my beer. This is what I want, and this is what I'm going to go with, okay? Now, let's say that I uh, want to keep the hops as is and change the grains, I could just go back to the grains and, and change this. I can go down to eight pounds instead of nine and go back at the hops calc and see that change a little bit here too. See, so the grains and the hops play together to get you the IBUs. And, it's, and this is why I like the spreadsheet. You can do a lot of what if scenarios without ruining the beer. And uh, it's a real advantage when it comes to designing your own recipes. Okay, doke. All right, so I have all this stuff entered in here. So let's go back and take a look at my recipe sheet. And uh, here we go. My entries got entered in here for me. I got my species. Everything's all set up here. My time addition times there all set up right so I can, this is real easy to read when it comes time to, to a brew. I don't have to go back to this tab and, and try to interpret all these numbers. I just come back to the recipe tab and there's the, all the information I need. So I can take this shopping with me. When I go to the homebrew store, I know exactly what to buy. And so let's say you go to the homebrew store and you find Centennial House, but they don't have 8%. They have uh, 8.5 or 9.1 or something. Well, because now that we have the AAUs listed here, you can actually now know what, you know, uh, whether you need to buy more or less of those hops to get the same amount of bitterness or flavor contributions, uh, actually bitterness, actually, uh, to your beer. That's why I, I added the AAU column there because um, it helps you when you're shopping, especially um, when you're at the store going, oh boy, they don't have the right alpha acid the hops, it's something else, now it goes off my recipe. Well, you can approximate with these AAUs, or if you're smart, like, like I do sometimes, I actually take my, my phone with me, 
uh, with a copy of the spreadsheet on my phone. So I can actually punch this up on my cell phone and actually change the values in the store to match um, what I see at the store and see how it affects my beer and whether or not I want to change some of the ratios. And then I can come back to the recipe spreadsheet and say, okay, all right, this is good. So uh, this will work. I just use less of the hops or maybe I need more. So this is, that's good for that purpose as well. So just a little tip there, okay? Now if I scroll down here, you know, I, I can enter things in like, you know, you can add, uh, you know, add, uh, I like to add world flock tablets or Irish moss to clarify the beer in the boil. So uh, we're, we'll put in a world flock tablet here, for example, uh, mount one, you know, uh, at the 15 minute mark, right? I, uh, and do, you can add whatever I want here, you know, I can uh, add other things. If I'm doing a wit beer, I'll throw in the orange peel and coriander in here, for example. And uh, okay, so okay, so down here now, here's what's expected of here. Uh, the recipe should be around 27 IBUs at 4.5% alcohol by volume. And I should be getting these expected pre boil starting gravities, original gravities, final gravities, as well as my pre boil volumes in these units, which will, which can alternate between metric and, and uh, US customary. And and then, of course, you can enter in the actual values here. So let's say now that you're uh, at brew day and you come along and you start actually doing these things here. I say, well, okay, my pre-boiled volume was supposed to be 27 and a half quarts. I actually got a little bit more at 28. I added that in there. My boil time was 75 minutes. That's fine. I don't deviate from that very much. My post-boil, well, you know, I actually had a little bit less than I thought at 23 quarts. And my batch volume ended up being like 20.75 or something like that, okay? Close, but not exact. Well, you can see over here, it actually uh, recalculated my actual IBUs for those actual uh, amounts. And that was, uh, so you can kind of see how close you were to what you designed versus what you got. So that's nice to know, right? Didn't have that on my old spreadsheet. Now I can come down here to my pre-boil starting gravity. So let's see, I measured with my hydrometer a 1.040. And my original gravity was uh, 1040. Seven, and my final gravity was 1.0. Uh, I'll do 11. Let's see what happens here. Okay, now you see values enter in over here on on the in the upper well middle right over here. The efficiency got entered in because I entered in values here that were required to get these values to show up. So my actual efficiency was 75. I actually did better than I estimated. Now going forward in the future, if if 75% is more common than 72. I'm going to, from that point forward, use 72% back in the brew house setup tab over here, down here, where it says extract efficiency. I, I would change this to 75 on my next recipe so I have a better alignment with what I want and what I get or closer together than this. Okay, because this, although I have better. Uh, extract efficiency, that's not necessarily always good because you designed your beer with a balance of malt, uh, you know, sugar flavor, and a to a balance of hoppy bitterness flavor, and you just kind of skewed the balance here in favor of more malt. So the beer is not going to be as hoppy, it'll be a bit more malty. That may be good, but just to let you know, uh, you're exceeding your efficiency is not always good. And as well as uh, not achieving your efficiency, just to keep that in mind, okay? And then again, you see down here, the alcohol by volume, uh, the actual because is actually about 4.7, a, a little higher, and that had something to do, again, with the extra sugars from the efficiency, I think. There's a little bit more sugar that the yeast uh, you know, uh, will chomp on, all right? As well as um, the parent attenuation. Now, this came from the package or the information from the yeast, this is what we uh, measured. That was pretty close, right? That's really cool. Now, ideally, if, if everything was exactly right, if I type in 27.52, 23.25, 1, and I enter in the exact values. So let's say I'm a, I'm a pro at this, and I've gotten so good at this, I hit these things time after time after time, exactly as predicted. Well, um, 
the efficiencies match, the IBUs will match, the alcohol for some reason should match, but it's a little off, I'm not quite sure why right now. And the apparent attenuation, oh, this is something to do with it. Um, this is the average attenuation, remember, uh, on the yeast tab, uh, these yeasts have a uh, range on, on, on most of them. Well, so that's just a range, it's not an exact, it's an average, so I don't expect this to always be the same, but it's close. All right, and, and uh, of course, and then it, with a the refractometer, um, I don't have my actual bricks values I'd use. I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess the numbers here. Let's see, I had 16 bricks on the uh, original gravity. That was too, oh, too high. Maybe it was like 12 or 14, maybe 11. Huh. Okay, well, you, you can tell I'm not used to bricks yet, which is why I say it's kind of an experimental field. But let's take out 10 bricks. It's close enough. And then my bricks here went down to, uh, I don't know, like uh, six maybe. No, well, eight, nine. I'm getting there, guys. I really, this is something I'm not used to doing regularly. Oh, actually, it'd be higher. Uh, pardon my ignorance, folks. I'm not good at this. This is why I'm experimenting with this stuff now, still. And again, I would enter a value for the final bricks, which would be somewhere in this neighborhood. I don't know exactly what it would be, but it's close enough, okay, for this demonstration purposes. And, it, and then it converts it to the equivalent uh, specific gravity just to verify and, and um, compare with my actual measured ones and as compared to the, as designed. And that's, and that's it. I mean, this is, these are the enhancements. So now I can print this out and use this on Blue Day or use this live, uh, again, on a laptop, a tablet, or a phone um, in your garage, your basement, or wherever you're brewing. And have a really good brew day. You put some notes down off the here as to things that you did or plan to do with the beer. Maybe your notes on how it tasted afterwards. I archive these files on my computer somewhere uh, over the long term so I can come back and reference them again and make copies of them and update them and make iterations of recipes. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the beer was really good, except that maybe it could use uh, a little bit less of a hop bite. I can reduce the amount of of uh, bittering hops, maybe it needed more hop aroma. I can add some more hop aroma. Maybe the malt profile wasn't quite right. Maybe I, uh, maybe I, I want to add or remove some malts here. Um, so there you go. And there you have it: an overview and deep dive of uh, the changes, enhancements, and functionality of how to use the spreadsheet. I, I uh, do have to apologize. I wish I had gotten to these changes sooner. I, I do listen to you folks. I, uh, I've taken all your comments and feedback and I've uh, kept it close to me, intending to make these changes as soon as I had a chance. Time is short as, as it is with everybody, especially that this is a hobby of mine and, and not my full-time thing, right? Um, but I did find time to match you, finally to make these changes for you. I hope they were worth your while. And if you like what I did, please like the video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please comment as well. Uh, let me know what you think of these changes. I, I want to hear back from you, okay? And if you found this uh, video and this new spreadsheet especially helpful for you, please consider a, a kind donation to, to me at the uh, link in the video description down below or on the spreadsheet. Uh, it, it does uh, boost my morale to know that I'm able to uh, help, help you all well enough that you're willing to contribute to the cause, so to speak to allow me to continue to make these videos and to update the spreadsheet and maintain it. So please, uh, again, like, subscribe, comment, donate, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.